On the topic of outer space, a lot of things are gatekept from us and hidden from us. And a lot of Christians don't even know how to compartmentalize the whole idea of other planets and how it fits the biblical worldview. Considering there's not much in the Bible about other planets. However, what if I told you there is a planet mentioned in the Bible which has been conveniently hidden from us from space institutions? And upon further research of this planet, I've now discovered the deep and dark reason that it's been hidden from us all of these years. What's going on guys? It's Big Nick back for another video. Thank you guys so much for for coming back to the channel today. Before we get into today's video, if you guys like Christian content, please give this video a like, subscribe to my channel down below if you are new, and turn on my post notifications so you never miss a new video. Without further ado, Let's get into it. This planet in outer space that the Bible spoke about long ago has been hidden from us for a very dark reason. Although there are eight recorded planets in our solar system, there is one more that has been hidden known as planet Rahab. Scientists gave it a different name known as Phaeton, which is a hypothetical planet hypothesized by the Tidius Bode Law to have once existed between the orbit of Mars and Jupiter, speculating that its destruction is what led to the formation of the asteroid belt. However, this was already written in the Word of God, but many Christians have not seen it. Before we show you where in the scriptures this event was talked about, let's take a look at the archaeological evidence first outside of the Bible. Steve Quayle, an archaeological researcher, actually had his team go on an expedition in Mexico where they dug up artifacts on indigenous land known to be hotspots for the Aztec civilization. This is where they came across tablets with hieroglyphs inscribed on them way too advanced for human understanding. Known as the Glyph Project, they used a quantum computing system which derived information from over 250,000 astroglyphs to decode these tablets into English translations. This project consisted of 12 to 15 members, lasting 18 months with over 20,000 man-hours of work. The computer time to decode these glyphs took about 116,000 shape-matching hours, 250,000 in-context reading hours, and 300,000 decoding hours. That's how complex these hieroglyphs really were. As you guys know, a quantum computing system is a very highly advanced piece of technology. So for it to take that long just to decode glyphs really captures the essence of the type of knowledge we're dealing with here in regards to the fallen angels. Now let's talk about the planet Rahab and its connection to the tablet that they found. A tablet which was discovered and decoded from an Aztec temple gave shocking details about a planet in which the fallen angels habitated on known as planet Rahab. Once the glyphs were decoded, they were able to identify the fallen angels by name that roamed this exact planet. Some that walked on this planet were known as Penemu, Armors, Semjaza, Amazark, and Azazel. These were the same fallen angels that were identified in the extra biblical literature known as the Book of Enoch. And for those who haven't seen my Book of Enoch video, I go into detail on why that's a legit source. And I also showed where the New Testament writers quoted from that book directly. The tablet where they discovered the fallen angel's activity on the planet Rahab was given the title the Nephilim Stone by the Expeditionaries, where it detailed about an event where the fallen angel set up their headquarters to worship Lucifer on planet Rahab, where they call him their master until they self-admit in the tablet that God destroyed their planet due to a strong wrath against the kingdom of darkness. More evidence of the destruction of planet Rahab was inscribed into the glyphs by the fallen angels, where it was decoded as a planet between the orbit of Mars and Jupiter, which they detailed was the planet Rahab. As you remember previously, the Tidius Bode Law also specified that the destruction of this planet was between the orbit of Mars and Jupiter. The Bible also talks about how God destroyed this planet in Job 26, 11 to 12, where Job talks about God shattering Rahab. It reads this, The pillars of heaven tremble and are astounded at his rebuke. By his power he stilled the sea. By his understanding he shattered Rahab. The prophet Isaiah also spoke about this same event in Isaiah 50. 51, 9, where he states it was God who cut Rahab into pieces. It reads, Awake, awake, put on strength, O arm of the Lord. Awake as in the days of old, the generations of long ago. Was it not you who cut Rahab in pieces, who pierced the dragon? King David also knew about this event where he details in Psalm 89, 10 about how God crushed Rahab like a carcass, as well as how God scattered his enemies with his mighty arm. It was widely believed by Old Testament writers that there was a planet known as Rahab, which God utterly destroyed. We can see evidence of this planet explosion in the solar system here on Earth with white shiny fragments of metal known as iridium, which is a component found in meteors and comets located in the KT boundary, a thin layer of sediment that marks the geologic point in Earth's history between the Cretaceous and Tertiary periods. The reason this is more proof of an interplanetary explosion is because iridium is almost impossible to find on planet Earth alone. So the high content of this material can only be possible due to a meteor explosion, which we know as the destruction of planet Rahab. This is also the same time period 
in which scientists told us that the dinosaurs on Earth went extinct due to a massive meteor explosion. The fallen angel hieroglyphs indicate that the destruction of Rahab was a pre-Adamic event, which means that this destruction occurred before the creation of Adam and Eve. The idea of a pre-Adamic era is also supported in scripture, because when we read Genesis 1, 1 to 2 in the original Hebrew language, it gives us a whole new deeper explanation on the state of the earth, as well as space itself in regards to the conventional way that we are used to learning. Now in the English version it reads this, In the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was without form and void, and darkness was over the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. So according to our English version, the earth was without form and void. This, however, is not the sense in the Hebrew. The Hebrew strong concordance gives ruin or desolation, tohu, as the proper meaning of the noun rendered without form, bohu. The second word signifies emptiness, then that which is empty, so that in this case, the authorized translation is admissible. Now these words are found together only in two other passages, in both of which they are clearly used to express the ruin caused by an outpouring of the wrath of God. Also, the word was, translated from the Hebrew version case, is actually similar to the word became, which means that the scripture could actually read, and the earth became desolate, ruin, and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. The reason this supports the pre-Edemic theory stated in the fallen angel hieroglyphs is because in order for something to become desolate, it has to have order and structure first. Now, it's clearly indicative that the second verse of Genesis describes the earth as a ruin, but there is no hint of the time which elapsed from the pre-Edemic civilization and this ruin that occurred. However, we do know for a fact that the earth did suffer ruin during the pre-Edemic civilization. As a result of the interplanetary explosion of Rahab, documented in the Bible as well as the fallen angel glyphs decoded by the quantum computing system. Like I mentioned earlier, we were taught about how the dinosaurs went extinct on earth due to some sort of meteor explosion, but we were never taught about why this explosion occurred. The men of God knew the truth about this planet explosion, and the reason this was hidden from the public is because this would prove that God is real. Considering it was verified that he was the one that caused this explosion as an act of eviction against the interplanetary headquarters of Lucifer and the fallen angels. This all points to the fact that the Bible is real and Jesus Christ is the Messiah. The elite know these deep biblical truths, but they hide it from us so the church can be ignorant about supernatural matters, to desensitize us from the magnitude of God's word, as well as the truth of the unseen. However, we are in the last days, and during this time, everything that has been hidden is going to be revealed for the edification of the end-time church of God. Once you know these deep spiritual truths, it causes you to look at the word of God with a whole new sense of reverence, because in the end, you'll realize that God's word already mentioned these events from the very beginning of time. If you made it all the way till the end of the video, I want you to comment down below, God destroyed Rahab. Guys, I also want to mention, I just dropped a new Christian hip-hop song, so if you want to check that out, I'll link that in the description. In fact, let's look at a clip I just shot the other day, and I'm wearing some shades and grills, so don't be scared, okay? Don't get religious on me. You should be bad down, but my lord, he saw me, and he gave me a spirit, yeah, it's really calming. Eternal life is real, you're gonna be responding. So when he called my name, I had to start responding. When I was in the world, I had a spell on me. Until they set me free, now it is well with me. Purchased by the blood, all cause of Elohim. So now I speak in Psalms, I'm making melodies. When I was in the world, I had a spell on me. Until they set me free, now it is well with me. Purchased by the blood, all cause of Elohim. So now I speak in Psalms, I'm making melodies. The song is called Spell, and to check out the full version, you can click the link in my description. If you guys want to financially sew into this ministry, I have an offering link that's in the description. Or you can buy my merch that I dropped, which is also linked in the description. If you guys want to watch my last video, simply click up here. And if you guys want to subscribe to the channel, simply click up here. I'll see you guys very soon for another video. I love you guys so much. May God bless all of you. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, take care and peace out.